Alrighty, everybody. Here we are. A month has passed. Well, not really a month. It's only been a couple weeks since we've had our last discussion about indoor football. What has been going on in the indoor slash arena football circles since we last spoke to one another on September the 12th. You know, only about three or four weeks ago. I'll tell you, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Um, let's start at the top with the IFL. IFL, they have gotten their league meetings done, and the schedule will be out very soon. We're talking like the middle of October, but there has been some problems on the other hand. You know, a lot of things are up in the air. It seems that the league is going to prioritize finances, you know, getting money, obviously over competition and that conferences may not be a thing at all um, and that there's just a lack of good dates available especially in Green Bay's case their um, their PR team is really doing a good job covering this uh, man go, go check them go check out we'll find Green well obviously you, you know you guys know how to Google go Google Green Bay Blizzard's Facebook and you know just go ahead and just boom there it is right there um there's also seems to be that there's going to be some changes with officiating and uh, the rule, and maybe some rules are going to be changed, but I don't know anything about that just yet. And personally, um, you know, it seems like officials are, you know, I I'm not sure what, what the officiating situation is. It seems like it's because of college football and NFL coming back and stuff like that. There's, that's why there's a something, you know, off with the officials. Um, as far as... Um, coaching goes, Les Moss got let go by Iowa. Really bad year for Iowa. They barely got in the playoffs, we're talking. They barely got in there. They got in there by the by the skins of their teeth, you know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I usually don't talk about, you know, coaches and stuff like that. This is really a significant one because the Barnstormers not look too good last year. They did not look too good in 2021, this season. The big one, the big thing is that the CIF, their new teams, have announced a bunch of coaches. Former player Dante Dudley is Rapid City's head coach now. I don't know who Brian Schmidt is, but apparently he's in one of the Facebook groups. Um, so, you know, he's Billings' head, new head coach. Topeka's going to announce theirs very soon. But the real big kicker here is that the CIF released their first schedule. Now, there's probably going to be changes to the schedule like there always is. And it all it, there's already a problem with it. I have several issues with this, as I usually do with CIF. First off, they released it four and a half months before the season begins, you know. Um, and it seems like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, CIF, you know, they got themselves together this off season. You know, they got themselves together, and, you know, it seemed like I was confident that the CIF won this year, 2021. I was confident that they won you know, this season based on how things went during the season, but this off season so far, not at all, not at all. I am disgusted at this point with the, with the fact that we still have non-league games. You know, if you want to be professional, you, you, you tout yourselves as a professional league, there should not be three non-league games on your schedule. There should, there, those should be there. I don't care if it's lack of availability for arenas or anything like that. Stop doing this. This is not professional. I don't. I don't but it's to gauge talent. Again, in the, in the game of indoor football, you know, players change pretty much every week. So the fact that you know, it, it's the gauge talent. No, 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 no. Stop that right there. Stop that. Stop that right now. I don't care if CIF fans come on me about this, but, you know, talent, you know, there's talent in the Midwest, obviously, you know, that's where the CIF has basically, you know, centered themselves now. There's, there's, there's definitely some talent out there that's probably sitting at home, you know, waiting for an opportunity to get up and go to, and go be on a team. So, don't give me that, you know. Oh, well, the, the, there was this, you know, with the players and stuff like that. No, stop it. Stop that right now. But the season officially starts on March the 12th, so, you know, it looks like CIF may be first. Good to come back, but we'll talk about, you know, what what all that means, you know, again, you know, soon. Not not right now. 
obviously I think I'll have another update again, you know, about things, but what also what the CIF schedule also revealed is you know Dodge City is no longer Dodge City. In fact, they're gonna have to re again, they're gonna have to revise this. It's Southwest Kansas, the Southwest Kansas Storm. Dodge City has rebranded, basically, and it's a logo that exists. I don't, I don't really like it. I'm, I'm already imagining tie dye uniforms right now. You know, y'all remember, y'all remember the Waco tornadoes? Yeah, they have those types of uniforms too. And those look ugly. I'm imagining tie dye uniforms, and it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be ugly as sin. I'm telling you right now. Um, so, congrats to the guys over who own the Southwest Kansas Storm, though. You know, obviously they weren't supposed to be back in 2021. But they are anyway due to Oklahoma. So Oklahoma, on the other hand, it seems like Oklahoma, you know, that whole operation down there, in it, it is, it's dead. It's a done deal for the most part. It, there could be something going on, you know, behind the scenes. But I think the workers' comp was just too much to overcome. That's what I'm thinking. You know, that again, the, the workers' comp issues were a big big problem early in the season for the CIF and that's why all those Oklahoma players had to go up to Dodge City and rebrand um, so I don't, I don't know I don't know what's going on you know it seems like Oklahoma's dead maybe they'll come back I mean but likely since they've been kept off the schedule it likely means that they're dead two teams that are very interesting to talk about here is Amarillo and West Texas now, Amarillo and West Texas did the Lone Star Series, you know, during the season, you know, during the CIF season. In fact, it was like later in the CIF season that they were doing the Lone Star Series against a bunch of Bush League type teams, you know, including the San Antonio Valor, whose owner, um, John Cardenas, got finally, he's, he's in jail. And John Cardenas is finally in jail 20 years, you know, for just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that is just vile. Um, but yeah, Amarillo and West Texas, it seems like things are, I don't know what's going on with them. And that, uh, I know some of y'all in the comment section are going to start, you know, well, here comes the San Antonio, uh, the Gunslingers, here comes the North Texas Bulls, you know, we can get that Texas League going. And I know, and I know, and I know, I know, I know y'all are going to say that. I know, I know somebody's going to say that right now. Once this video comes out, I know somebody's going to say that. You know, well, that's this is what's going to happen. I honestly don't know. I don't know anything about what Amarillo and West Texas have done. I have not seen anything from their social medias in quite a while. I haven't seen anything at all. They're not. They're not on the schedule. And it seems like CIF is focusing on the Midwest, which again, like I've said, is where the IFL should have been focusing this entire time. Speaking of West. Denver's arena is not ready, and I'm not sure what the actual reason is. I think somebody had said that they were letting out the arena for like homeless people or something like that, which is which is nice, you know. But Denver's not of uh, not ready yet. They either don't have the money. Apparently, that is also true. The Denver's guys do not have the money, and they never picked the name for the team. Never, it was the Dynamite. The cannibals and something else like Rocky Mountain something. So you know, Denver never got anything done, and the uh, the uh, the arena out there was just never done. So obviously that puts Denver to bed. You know, the, don't even get me started on the Colorado Stampede. We haven't heard anything about them in months. So uh, there, there's really nothing to talk about more with uh, with teams as far as teams go let's talk about the schedule again let's go back to the schedule real quick again I'm thinking this is going to get revised like it usually does it, it, it was revised twice in 2021 twice or, or in between the 2020 you know, you know the COVID year and 2021 like not even a couple weeks before the season began the schedule got revised the CIF several times and first things first, I want to go back to Billings' press release. There was like a press release from Billings, you know, a while back when they first announced their team. And it said 12 games. They were going to do 12 games. Why is it, why is it not 12? Again, 
there's exhibition games on here like there usually is, and it's disgusting that there are. But again, 10 games, a 10 game season, sure, you know, there, there's nine teams. Obviously, you know, things don't actually you know, just work out magically like that. But from March the 12th all the way up to June the 4th, something's, something's a little bit wrong here. Something's a little bit off here. And it, it's just, a, it, it's the same thing that CIF's been doing, you know, for the past couple of years now because, I mean, I don't know what's going on. They've changed commissioners, you know, several times in the past year. Like, Black and Horse got let go, and Benzio's now the head coach. I mean, not the head coach, the commissioner. So, I have no idea what's going on in the front office. And, you know, seems like it's been very, very... This, like, this has been... This is a bad situation to start off the offseason. At least the IFL is trying to get things together, but the way the CIF has done things this offseason so far, you know, just with the schedule release by itself, and with all these new teams, you know, just the way it has been portrayed so far gives me a bad impression, gives me a horrid impression, and I I'm not going to speak on this anymore. Again, hopefully, you know, things turn out well, but I mean, you know, again, a 10-game schedule just does not do it for me, you know, CIF used to be like, hey, let's do 12 games, you know, and what happened to that, I have no idea, you know, figure you can go the Alabama cupcake route by scheduling, you know, teams that aren't even in the same caliber as you are, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I have some quick notes here about, you know, some other stuff here. Um, the NAL, the only thing for the NAL right now is that Columbus has been posting. Thankfully, they're the only team that's been really posting so far. They're holding tryouts on October 16th, so if you live out in that area, go ahead and go see what you got. If you're a former player or something like that, or if you're a player just stumbling upon this video, go ahead and go out to Columbus, Georgia. Where is it? Yeah, go out to Columbus and get yourself on, you know, for a little bit of that tryout, you know, go get some tryouts. Now this is from, now this source is from the um, Indoor Football Insiders again. They're not the most trustworthy source in the world, but they do get some things right. And the only thing, there's a couple things from them, you know, well, actually it's just one thing. But yeah, there's a couple things from them that have been said, is that Charlotte, the Charlotte Thunder, They've been looking to join the America Indoor Football, you know, league in the the AIF that's coming back. You know, the I, the AIF that was dead at one point, but now they're back. Apparently, Charlotte's looking to join. I have no idea how many teams are in this league so far, and there really hasn't been any information about that to really confirm that so far. Um, the America Indoor Football Alliance, on the other hand, seems to be looking at a Bush League team called the Las Vegas Kings. That's the other source, you know, that's the other thing the Indoor Football Insiders have got. Again, I don't really know. Again, you know, it just seems very Bush League at this point because the Las Vegas Kings apparently do not have an arena. So, and again, it's Las Vegas. That's not going to work. Maybe that'll fit for the AWFC, um, but I'll talk about them in a second. But the AIFA, the American Dual Football Alliance, has had their league meetings. They already messed up their logo at one point, you know, foots all. Where's the B at? They messed up their logo, and even I, you know, messed up, you know, because I had gotten the wrong logo initially. And I believe they still have that pick up. That, that, that pick is still showing up on Google. So if you go look America Indoor Football Alliance on Google, it'll say football. I mean, it'll, it'll say foot all on the logo instead of football. So I, I guarantee you that that pick's still there. Um, the AWFC, on the other hand, they are having their league meetings later in October. In fact, it'll be by the time this video comes out, it'll be the next Saturday. So the next Saturday is when the AWFC has their league meetings again. They got the Red Tails from the soft season in San Diego, but again, I don't know what I don't know what's going on with the Red Tails of San Diego. It seems like you know another tier three type operation there, which is not a good operation. 
and we all know the AWFC has had a bad reputation, but it seems like they got their six teams and they got things together for the most part. I mean, again, who knows? You know, I, I, I genuinely don't know. But the only thing from them is that they have their league meetings. Now, I am going to leak something here in this video, and that is from the AAL. And the AAL is still restructuring. The American Arena League is still restructuring because we don't know what's going on with this league right now. But the director of PR clearly does not know what's going on with this league. If you're the director of public relations, and I believe uh, Liz, whatever her last name is, um, Last, last names are difficult for me, you know, difficult sounding last names are difficult, but the director of public relations and, and communications and stuff like that for the, for the revive, revamped AAL just does not know what's going on, you know, uh, the interview I saw was just, you know, it, it did not tell us very much stuff, it, 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 it kind of solidifies, yeah, this is a new group that's trying to get things together, but they're not doing it in a way that has really been, you know, cohesive so far because it's October. Again, it's October. Things need to start trickling out. Even for low, even for lower level leagues, things need to start trickling out. And you know, for the top of the crap pile, the AL is what they are right now. You know, they're still the top of the crap pile, which is uh, not a good league. And they want, and it seems like they do want to improve their reputation. It really seems like they do, but again, you know, you're, you're the director of public relations, and people are asking how many teams are left in this league, and and you answer, I genuinely don't know. Something will be announced soon. That's a red flag, red red flag. Again. You know, there's a lot of defectors that have left already to form their own league. You know, remember, the AIFA is formed of AAL teams, former AAL teams. And, you know, things are not looking pretty right now. You know, I'm sure something's got to give, you know, very soon. But right now, I'm not very confident in the AAL. I'm not very confident right now, and it has to get a little bit better. You know, it has to get better. You want to rise from the rungs of being a league of the same caliber as the AWFC or the AIFA or the AIF or the EIF or whatever Bush League comes around this week. You know, you have to get improved in all aspects. Like everybody's running away from you. We we don't know what North Texas and San Antonio are doing. We don't know what they're doing. We know the Chicago Power left. We don't know what West Michigan's doing. Again, um, those four teams that ran off the form, the AIFA, they're gone. They, they're doing their own thing. They got their league meetings out of the way. Charlotte's gone. Charlotte Thunder, who have the most money, it seems, in this league, you know, with Ted Ginn Jr. running the operation. And another guy, I forgot his name. But, you know, again, the AL is in a bad, bad situation, and it needs to get better. It needs to get a whole lot better if you want to be taken seriously. And you know, again, hopefully, the, hopefully, AL guys see this video, see my little rant on them, and you know, they, they again, this is this is from me to y'all. Get it together and start announcing stuff. You need to start announcing arena dates. You know, because I know concerts are coming back. I know there's all sorts of different sporting events coming back, but you need to announce arena dates. You cannot play an eight-game schedule again, mostly with non-league opponents again. You can't do that. If you want to be professional, you have to play teams in your own league. Look at you, CIF. You have to play teams in your own league. Do 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 something about that. You can't, you can't spread out a calendar from March all the way to June and have there only be eight games available. You know, try and get something going. Try and get something available. You can't have, you know, just have teams with two road games. That's not going to get it done. That's the, 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 the ticky tacky, you know, two road games to have six home games. It's ticky tacky type stuff. That makes me really, really pissed off. So that'll pretty much do it here. Uh, I have nothing else to say. 
Y'all know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I will see you all in about 12 hours as far as this video goes. Y'all take care. Have a good night.